Welcome to the Suscriptmat short videos. Now we'll talk about the criticality of raw materials. I'm today here with Dominique Gouillonet from GRGM. That's the French Geological Survey. Dominique is head of BRGM campus, which provides higher education in the geoscience field. Amongst others, Dominique has worked on quantifying flows and stocks of rare earth in the EU 28. Dominique, what are raw materials and why are they important? Hello. Um, raw materials are crude materials uh, that can be converted into useful products, um, either through processing or uh, manufacturing. And um, there are raw materials um, all, all, all around us every day. And in, in, in Suskrit Mat, we are interested in mineral raw materials. Um, Around us there are, of course, well, the metals that we use in uh, cars, uh, buildings, bridges, etc. But, for example, in the room where we are right now, uh, there are, uh, we're surrounded by uh, mineral raw materials. There's, for example, the, the gypsum in the plaster uh, in the walls. There's uh, silica in, in windows. There's uh, carbonates and silicates in the, the bricks and concrete that make up the, the, the buildings. Um, during the, the 20th century, there's been literally a, an explosion of the, uh, in the, the consumption of so-called specialty uh, metals. Uh, those are associated with high technology uh, applications. Uh, for example, indium in the touch screens of our smartphones, uh, tellurium or gallium in the, the solar panels, uh, uh, neodymium and dysprosium in uh, permanent magnets uh, that are used for wind turbines, lithium cobalt for energy storage, etc., cetera, uh, etc. Cetera. Uh, consumption of, of these elements uh, has seen very high annual growth rates, maybe 5% or, or more. Uh, but the consumption of more common metals, such as copper or aluminium, for example, is also strongly on the rise. Uh, at current uh, consumption rates for copper, uh, the, the, the annual increase of consumption is nearly 3% uh, per year. Uh, we will consume more copper in the next 20 years than during the entire uh, history of humanity. Uh, on this slide, we can see that this growth rate has been effective for, for over uh, a century. So. It is essential to get into the circular economy so that we can rely on secondary sources of raw materials, recycled sources, and less on primary sources uh, extracted from the ground. You were talking about uh, specialty raw materials, and I know that the Suscriptment project is also on critical raw materials. What are critical raw materials? So criticality is a, a sort of risk assessment applied to mineral raw materials. Uh, a mineral raw material is considered to be critical if, on the one hand, it is essentially for an important sector of the economy, and on the second hand, it, there are risks of shortage uh, of that material's supply. And the big buzz around uh, criticality really took off, at least in the media, uh, in the year 2011, when there were uh, geopolitical tensions between China and uh, Japan over ownership of the uh, Senkaku Islands in uh, the East China Sea. And this led to uh, reduced Chinese exports uh, of rare earths. It sparked fierce speculation on rare earth uh, markets because China controlled over 90% of uh, global, the world uh, rare earth production. The price of neodymium, for example, that is essential in uh, uh, magnets uh, applications, permanent magnets, the price was multiplied by nearly a factor of 10 within only a, a few months. This slide shows the evolution of uh, rare earth prices since 2005, and especially the peak in 2011. Since then, prices have subsided, but this event was a warning sign for uh, Western countries, which suddenly realized how vulnerable, vulnerable they were with respect to the Chinese monopoly regarding the production of rare earths. 
But not only rare earths, uh, China dominates the production of many other metals such as tungsten, bismuth, germanium, uh, antimony, to name just a few. When you talk about criticality, how is this measured? Actually, criticality is not measured. I it is estimated using various uh, methodologies. Criticality depends on scale. Are we looking at the scale of a company or a country or the world? Uh, it depends on time. Are we looking at short term or long term? Uh, it also depends on the user of the raw material. What is critical for one company, for example, a car manufacturer, uh, is not necessarily important for another, for example, a solar panel uh, producer. In order to estimate the vulnerability of the European Union as a whole to disruption in raw material supply, the Euro European, Union, European Commission uh, developed a methodology that relies on various influencing factors, uh, some for economic importance of mineral raw materials and others for uh, material supply risks. For example, which applications use uh, this raw material? Are these applications important for the European, European economy? Is there a monopoly in terms of uh, production of this uh, raw material? Uh, can this raw material uh, be replaced by another one uh, in the important applications, that's called substitution, uh, etc. Uh, estimators of economic importance and supply risk are then plotted on an XY plot and a threshold is defined to highlight which raw materials should be considered critical. This slide shows the results of the European Commission's criticality analysis published in 2017. Then which raw materials are critical? Again, the answer depends on whom you ask. Criticality is not an intrinsic property of a raw material, but depends on the user. The list established by the European Commission in 2017 for the vulnerability of Europe as a whole highlights uh, a certain number of uh, raw materials as particularly critical uh, for Europe. For example, light rare earth uh, elements, especially neodymium and praseodymium that are used to make permanent magnets found in uh, electric vehicles, wind turbines, etc. Uh, heavy rare earth elements, especially dysprosium and terbium, also for magnet applications. Magnesium for special light alloys, uh, for example in transportation to reduce weight and hence uh, fuel consumption. Antimony, which is a, uh, a flame retardant in plastics, textiles, etc. Phosphorus, an essential element for all life. Phosphate is a major component of fertilizers in agriculture. Tungsten, used for high strength cemented carbide tools, but also for uh, special alloys for aero aeronautics, etc. The European, uh, European Commission updates its critical raw material list every three years or so. There have been proposals, for example, by uh, the University of Yale in the US to develop a common criticality assessment methodology, but this was not uh, followed up for the time being. Can't we uh, solve this scarcity issue by recycling? Well, recycling is definitely a part of the solution, but and, and it should be uh, developed as much as uh, f technically and economically uh, feasible. But when demand for a raw material is rapidly increasing, as in, in the case of uh, critical raw materials, recycling can only satisfy part uh, of the demand. This is because when you, you buy a product, uh, you don't throw it away immediately uh, for it to be recycled. You use it and discard it only after a, a, a certain time. But during that time, demand has increased. Uh, so when your product becomes a waste, the waste stream can only cover part of the demand. So when demand is high, uh, uh, primary resources, those that are extracted from the, the ground, cannot be avoided. Uh, so this puts the emphasis on another pillar of the circular economy, uh, sustainable supply. Uh, mining activities must increase their environmental and social footprints at all stages of a mine's life cycle. This slide shows 
a large gold mining site in the south of France before and following remediation. So there, uh, in terms of mining governance, uh, the, a lot of work uh, was done to remediate properly. This slide, on the other hand, shows child labor in cobalt mines in the De Democratic Republic of, of Congo. Uh, so they're uh, illustrating very poor <laughs> governance. Consumers and co companies should be more aware of where the raw materials uh, that make up products are coming from. A lot of raw materials in the products we use every day are imported from countries where the social and, and environmental standards are very low. Uh, and so in a sense we are shifting, we're exporting uh, the emissions related to the raw materials that we're using. And that situation needs to improve. Thank you very much, Dominique, for Thank this you. introduction on criticality and the surrounding issues.